it's wrong to criticize leaders of the church, even if the criticism is true. the Constitution will not be saved in Washington. Prophecies and testimonies about the risen Son of God, Jesus Christ. Travis Wayne Goodsell. I'm working on a project while I'm doing this video. And we'll see if I can finish before I <clears throat> so there'll be interruption as interruptions during the video. You may recognize there's a thumbnail missing on my video from this morning, regardless of which channel you go to. There is a tendency among bullies to cause the problem, start the bullying. And the victims either are silent, you know, are silenced, they retreat and give in, give up, kill themselves with suicide or whatever snowflake move the bullies are causing terror for. Or they complain about the bullying. And the response of bullies is to retaliate. Sometimes that's a, a counter complaint as a bullying tactic, bl victim blaming. Uh, but uh, if they're in a position of power, such as YouTube, especially when they're under orders of the church, they. Uh, We'll just retaliate. It's our our site. We don't like you exposing the truth about the church. So we're going to make up any and all excuses to bully you into silence, even if it means faking a fraudulent reason for banning you. No, I'm not banned. Because wouldn't you know it? The previous mark just expired. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? Oh, I wonder if YouTube knew about that. Yeah, they knew damn well. That's what they do. I've been complaining about the bullying. They retaliate. This is just further retaliation. And the video that they retaliated on, used as their thing, was not about Oaks's misinformation, telling Mormons that women are not allowed to have priesthood authority in office. That Joseph Smith, in his 17th of March, 1842, talked to the Relief Society president in setting it up and organizing it, directly said offices of the priesthood in the same exact manner as priesthood offices for men. We went over deacon. But nope. Not that one. Not that one at all. Instead, it was about the misinformation campaign framing Joseph for sexual crimes and for which I was retaliated being accused of what Joseph was accused but in a thumbnail rather than actual little girls
and in Brigham Young's Wikipedia page, it says that he was well known for being called the American Moses, or the modern Moses, or the Mormon Moses. Uh-oh, Jesus is mad that Mormons were using Mormon to describe Brigham Young. Right, Nelson? Well, why Moses? Well, you got to know the story of the Exodus. But unfortunately, there are some problems that have developed because of this. And the main one is that we are warned in the Gospels we'll utilize Matthew 24 after talking about false Christ false prophets in the latter days that will deceive the very elect and who's the Christ Mormons all Mormons who go through the temple and are washed and anointed And so if a false Christ or a false prophet says unto you, Behold, the Messiah, the Christ, is in the desert. What is Utah? It's a desert, isn't it? We're now experiencing a drought because we took our mountains for granted purposely set it up for failure. Because again, that's what bullies do. They cause the problem, people complain, they retaliate. This is all part of that cycle of abuse of our government leaders and religious leaders here in Utah. But this goes beyond just violating Matthew the word of God, the iron rod, the true covenant path, not the one Nelson made, which is obedience to the prophets in the temple, the swearing of oath loyalties, he himself also declared himself Moses, not just his people. And by doing that, he declared himself as Moses of the Bible. In other words, Pharaoh is both the government and the religious leader. America is the government of which, you know, death to America in his temple endowment ceremony. With an oath of silence concerning it. But what about the religious part? Oh yeah, Joseph. Joseph is the founder. <coughs> In those latter days of Joseph's life, the Danites of Brigham Young were going around telling women, hey, Joseph Smith is secretly practicing the illegal practice of polygamy so have sex with me Bennett was one of them oh, I'm a medical doctor I can give you this serum pill or whatever which will cause an abortion or, yeah, an abortion and so you won't get pregnant your husband will never know be our little secret And Joseph excommunicated him when he found out about it. And he confessed. But that's what they were spending all their time doing, is falsely accusing Joseph. Oh, Joseph approves of this. Joseph said this. Joseph is doing this. And... then 
after they come to Zion in the desert, where Brigham Young is the Christ, which then kind of makes you wonder why we're having a second coming if we're already in Zion and the Messiah already came when the form of Brigham Young seems a little strange but we're getting to that because the church news is at it again <coughs> and so they are destroying the reputation image, character of Joseph Smith among Mormons to justify kidnapping Mormons and female sex slave trafficking out of the United States. And And in 1974, or 1874, I uh, have been talking about the discourse that Brigham Young gave, where he confesses that Joseph Smith actually had nothing to do with polygamy. Despite all the people who, after 1852, said, oh yeah, that's right, I remember Joseph had told me that an angel came to him in 1832 with the sword, Oh, right, the thumbnail was taken down. You can still see it in the video, though. And, yeah, all of a sudden Brigham Young says, Ah, oh, I punked everybody. Everybody's been lying to you. Joseph Smith had nothing to do with polygamy. It was all me, Brigham Young my inspiration. God inspired me in England. Well, Heber had already told him about it. Heber already had a second wife in 1829. But you see, now he's setting it up that he is the one inspired. He is Moses who was telling Joseph, let my Mormons go. You wicked man. And so, guess what he finally decided to publish that was in the Times and Seasons previously, so that we know that it is a legitimate scripture from Joseph Smith. But he puts it in the year before he dies in his that edition year of the Doctrine and Covenants. And so verse 7 and 8. And it shall come to pass that I, the Lord God, will send Brigham Young, holding the scepter of power in his hand. It's the one mighty and strong. We all know this, right? Clothed with light for a covenant, whose mouth shall utter words, eternal words, who all its bowels will be a fountain of truth, set in order the house of God. Brigham Young changed everything about Joseph's set in order temples. Brigham Young changed it all. And to arrange by lot the inheritances of the saints in the desert, which is in the Gospels commanding don't go there with them. It's not Zion. And verse 8. While that man, Joseph Smith, who was called of God by Jesus, who says that Jesus is an abomination in his sight, the brass plate, or the Book of Mormon plates that do not exist are codes and symbol meanings of the Knights Templar of the Mormon Moses. 
in the latter days. That putteth forth his hand to steady the ark of God shall fall by the shaft of death. Oh, yeah, he was assassinated, wasn't he? See what Brigham Young was doing here. He first came out, confessed, Joseph had nothing to do with polygamy. Ha, punked everybody. They just do what I tell them. I am king. And I have killed. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Scar uh, Mufasa. I think that was his name, wasn't it? Or that the orangutan. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and so, uh, Brigham Young set this all up. This is Zion. But there's a problem. The United States of America came and shut down the church with the Edmunds Tucker Act. Oops, Zion has been conquered. Uh oh. What do Mormons do now? Well, they live in denial, like the FLDS church is, now that Warren Jeffs is in prison. Mormons did the exact same thing. That's why the FLDS members do the same thing that the Mormons did under their corruption and fraud and polygamy. It wasn't just for polygamy. It wasn't religious freedom. It was corruption and fraud. With tithing, by the way. Which Brigham Young had set in motion back in Nauvoo. And so, yeah, that's why we're now Christian, is 1923, the church reincorporated as Evangelical Mormon. And because we're now Christian, we now believe in the historical Jesus of Constantine and in his second coming. What? I thought Brigham Young was Jesus as the Mormon Moses. Having fulfilled the prophecies, what's going on? Yeah, that's the problem. Which prophecies are being fulfilled? Because under Brigham Young, well, all of Joseph Smith's prophecies are fulfilled through him. But since the United States shut down Brigham's organization, and now Mormons are Christian, Oh no, what do we do? And so, there were those of us who were born and raised Mormon, outside of Utah, who did not get the message that Utah was the Latter-day Zion. Now we were going to go back to Missouri. And there, the Constantine Jesus was going to come from outer space to Adam on Diamond, and, and we'll have the New Jerusalem Temple built and the throne for Jesus after he goes and converts the remaining few Jews who survived the Holocaust of the latter days. And so which prophecies then are we supposed to check off for the latter days? The teachings in all of the Sunday school and seminary institute and our own scripture study is that, well, we're still going to go back to Missouri. No. No. Nope, nope, nope. Ain't the case. Because... In the church news, it was further pushed. I've been doing the videos covering what Nelson has been telling us. Let me bring it up here. I can probably take this down. Hmm. 
News release. That? No, that's not it. Where's the Pioneer one? There it is. <laughs> that was uh, the one from the other day about uh, giving women back their voice in conference. Because the pressure that was put on the church, not just me, Salt Lake Tribune also, uh, was that, uh, is the church now going to allow more female speakers during the lesser number of sessions for conference? And so we got the answer, no, we're bringing back the Saturday evening session. Women have their one time, one session per year. <laughs> they got that back. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not sexist at all. And, and wouldn't you know that there are Mormon men, if there are any women listening, who are okay with treating you as sex slaves treating you as property, giving you no voice and no say. I had a lot of thumbs down. So don't be thinking that, you know, if you're faithful and loyal to the church, that the church will be loyal and faithful back. No, they're using you. You're being played as a sucker and a loser. to them you are weak you are a snowflake you know, all this the Olympian who was not getting supported by America and so with her misstep she says no nah, I need to take a break get my thoughts together and so you have the liberal press going oh she needs mental care and the Republicans are victim blaming her, calling her a snowflake because she needs mental care. Both of them are abusing her. She is not getting supported. When you're representing America in the Olympics, you need America to back you up. So the church news talks about how pioneer items help give meaning to the journey to Zion. See, they're coming full out now. Brigham Young was taking Mormons to Zion. Joseph Smith was the bad guy. That's why he was assassinated. That's why he was constantly in jail, not for false accusations caused by the Danites who are secretly going around causing all the problems so that Joseph would get blamed for it and get him out of the picture so that Brigham Young could rise up into power and take over. So if there's any doubt in anybody's mind, we're not going to Missouri. Nothing's built even. Right here on the Church News, 28th July, 2021. Journey to Zion. This is it. Which violated scripture. The word of God. It's translated correctly. And if you watched, and I know lots of people have, so I'm sure all of you have, 
the Book of Mormon announcement, they're finishing up the Book of Mormon videos with the risen Jesus Christ. What have I been warning about? What have I been covering? That the prophets are upset with me about? Let's go through the plan of salvation again. And the theology, we came from a pre-mortal existence with our Heavenly Father as spirit children. There, we chose not to follow Lucifer, to take away people's agency with bullying and victim blaming and retaliation. We chose Heavenly Father's plan. And so we came to earth, received bodies, and when we die, our bodies are separated, or our spirits separate from our bodies. And we wait for Judgment Day. And depending on our righteousness on earth, level of righteousness, there are three kingdoms of glory. Not hell. Glory. And for the highest degree of the celestial kingdom, you desire to be married to one woman for time and all eternity. Not the criminal practice of polygamy. Unless there are just too many righteous women over men. The only reason and justification other than there are no more men, you're the last one, and there's at least one or two, I guess, if it's plain, who uh, say, well, okay, you are the last man, I normally wouldn't pick you first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, but you'll do since you're the last man left. <coughs> and so your wait for the resurrection for that glory. And what happens at the judgment? What is that glorification of the celestial kingdom called? I'll give you a hint. The historical Jesus of Constantine told his wife, Woman, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father. He'd already risen. He was there in front of her. He's risen. The angels announced it. He is risen. But he appears to his wife and says, don't touch me, woman. That's what you call a woman who's had children. If she doesn't have children, she's a virgin. So our current culture considers that offensive and you have the feminists who redid the Bible to make it femininely politically correct. Which makes it all wrong. Well that was quicker than I thought. So, who is the one person who will never ascend in Mormon theology? Give you a hint. Brigham Young designated personally what his symbol should be placed on both the Nauvoo and the Salt Lake Temple keystone of the doors of the Salt Lake Temple. The inverted pentagram of the one fallen from heaven. Lucifer. So he's calling himself and everybody else is calling him Moses who conquered Pharaoh, Joseph Smith, violating the scriptures, going into the desert, saying, hey, I'm Christ, I'm here, I'm in the desert. This is the right place. Yet, 
he's using the symbol of Lucifer. The one who causes the problem and then retaliates against those who complain to take away agency, to cause fear and trembling, to demand obedience through the covenant path and the Brigham Young created ordinances and the endowment ceremony, which the endowment ceremony itself he created for that purpose. And so yes, Lucifer is the one who never ascends. And I keep telling you, pay attention. They never, Nelson, never, and has now got the video segment to support it. They do not talk about Ascended. Because what happens in America in the Book of Mormon? The people, even the little children. He says, bring the little children. What do they do? They touch them. He told his wife, don't touch me, I've not yet ascended. And here he is in the Book of Mormon, just a few hours later, People are touching them. So, yeah, well, it's a Constantine Jesus, so none of it's real. It's a code, but for the story purposes, as Mormons believe it's history, you should have caught on to this. The whole point and purpose is that the last days, it's the ascended Jesus not just the risen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. This is the subtle trick they're doing. They're rewriting church history. They're using the church news to do it. I warned you of this. They're changing the doctrine, they're changing the theology, everything. They've already changed everything, but they're going back to Brigham. All things Brigham. And there's only one way they're going to be allowed to, because the United States still technically exists, even though it's fallen. But yeah, to officially collapse to no longer have people in the positions to pretend that they're succeeding with the infrastructure bill. You know all those Republicans who voted for it after it goes through the House and passes with the majority then goes back to the Senate for a final vote. Oh, whoops, where'd all those Republicans go? Oh, we no longer have 10 Republicans. Oh no, it doesn't pass. Oh, the Republicans pulled it again pulled the wool over the Democrats again. Oh, further delays, chaos ensues. This is what they've always done. They did it with Obama. And the Democrats are purposely not catching a clue. So yeah, I've warned you, this is what they're plotting for 2024, the April General Conference, with the rededication of the Salt Lake Temple. I wouldn't surpri be surprised if they say, oh, well, the Salt Lake Temple's almost completed, we're going to wait until it's completed before we have conference this year and do the dedication all together. Oh, it just happened to fell, fall on May 1st? Oh, what a coincidence. Let's check time and date to see what day of the week that would be. I'm going to laugh if it... Oh, let's see. Calendar, and then go ahead to 2024. 
It's Wednesday. Huh. Conference on Wednesday? It was done... I'm not sure if it was done on Wednesday. I know Thursday all the way to Tuesday, or at least Monday. Maybe Tuesday, because there was a time where Monday... Well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> the first is... Uh, is it a... Is it a first quarter or a third quarter now? Is there a key thing here? Okay, first quarter is on the left. So it's on the right. So it's a third quarter moon. Huh. That would be hilarious. If only we were alive to witness what would happen. So, yeah, I thought that was scary, to say the least. So, yeah, our only hope is for real divine intervention. Not just coincidental confirmations of me showing up Cox with an Elijah on the Priest of Baal story contest, and then Nelson, the same thing, but with authority rather than drought. So, yeah. You guys should be scared. You guys should be terrified. And you're either a willing willing com uh, participant compliant or you are thinking you're just part of a club and you don't care because there are Mormons like that they're just they're born Mormon they'll die Mormon they don't care they don't really exert themselves in the church you know the prophets came out and said oh no you don't want to be intellectual don't study your scriptures just read them just listen to us. We'll tell you what to believe in. Okay, good. I don't need to do any work. Pay your tithing, and that's it. You know, they go to church. They refuse callings. No, nah, I don't. The spiritual witness says I shouldn't take that calling, Bishop. There are Mormons who do that now. <coughs> and so, yeah, they're just going through the motions. Yeah, I'm a Mormon. And we're in Utah, so Mormons are able to be proud here in Utah. You know, I'm Mormon. I don't need to worry about being ridiculed and picked on as a snowflake. I'm the bully here in Utah. Yeah, and then we get online. Uh-oh, well, you've got to hide now behind fake channel names as a bully troll rather than using your own channel with your own face where people can attack you make false accusations you make comments of misinformation and disinformation not just about Joseph Smith but about others I had somebody on an older video comment today about locking Hillary up or somebody I it wasn't about Hillary. I don't know where this person was getting there from, but it was about misinformation that's going on. It was back in 2018 when I did the video. Uh, it was set up so that the desk was over here, so that the table had my books stacked on it, so that you can see all the reference books that I have for Paleo, Hebrew, and Egyptian. And uh, he was talking about locking her up, all the emails. But yeah, all that misinformation, and it's still going on as America is being destroyed, as we're all being assassinated by the bullies for retaliation because we complained. We want our water. Retaliation. Drought. 
can't breathe with this pollution. Retaliation, more pollution. Yep, so it's the end of the world. Uh, I'm going to save this video and upload it tomorrow morning. Assuming I'm not banned completely for one thumbnail that had nothing to do with any policy violation. They themselves are the policy violation. Again, from the scriptures, that which you falsely accuse of in another reveals the same and worse fault in themselves. Beam and moat. So. It's the big con, guys. Using the big lie to pull the big con. That could be the title. I'll think about that. I think it will, yeah, I think I can make that work. <laughs>